Hello, and welcome to this tips and tricks video where I'll be showing how to calculate the volume change in a part. So what we're looking at right now is a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter cube. So initial volumes, a thousand cubic millimeters. And I'm gonna be applying a displacement to different surfaces to make this just into a larger cube. And we'll look at what the change in volume is here. So in this analysis, I have some displacements. I'll go ahead and turn off the mesh display. So I'm moving the top surface up 10 millimeters and both side surfaces over 10 millimeters. So we're going from a 10 by 10 by 10 cube to a 20 by 20 by 20. So we'll go from 1,000 cubic millimeters to 8,000. If you look at the total deformation and animate that, you can see we're just taking the cube and doubling it in size. Now to measure the volume, what I'm gonna do is go to solution and click the worksheet. There's a user-defined result called volume. With any user-defined result, if you click on solution and click the worksheet, you can find a list of different user-defined results here. And if I scroll over, you can look at the output unit. A lot of times that'll help you find what you're looking for. If I scroll down here until I see volume right here, then I can see, okay, the expression is volume. So this one's fairly easy to remember. Some of the other ones are more difficult. So I'll right click on this and say, create user defined result. I could also just type in volume as the expression if I remember it. And I can right click and evaluate all results for this. Now, what this is gonna give me is the volume of every element here. So when I'm looking at this 1.37, that's the volume of each of the, my elements. If I look at the total, that'll give me the total volume. Now, a big thing to notice with this user-defined result is that if you don't have large deflection turned on, this is just gonna give you the initial volume. So you won't be able to measure volume change without large deflection turned on. If you do have large deflection turned on, this quantity will update through the course of the solution. So right now I have it turned off Large deflection is located under analysis settings right here. If I switch this to on, I'm also gonna change auto time stepping. Large deflection will make this nonlinear. So let's give it a couple sub steps here. We'll say five. And then I'll solve again. Okay, so now that the solution's finished, I can click on volume. And this time you can see the result is changing over time. And right now I'm looking at the total on this graph. So we can see it doesn't start quite at the beginning, but at 20% of the load, it's up to 1,700 cubic millimeters. And by the end, it's up to the expected 8,000. Uh, so you can see that changing as you go along. So if I wanted to calculate the volume change, I can look at this 8,000 and I can go to my component here and look at properties and see, oh, okay, the initial volume is 1,000. So I could calculate the change like that. The other way I could do it is if I'm not sure or I wanna use a meshed-based volume calculation for both the final volume and the initial volume, what I could do is create a load step at the beginning of the analysis where I don't apply any loads and then apply the loads in the second load step. That way, the initial load step, there's no loads applied, I get my initial volume. And then the second load step, I'll apply my loads and I'll get my final volume there. So that would look something like this. I can go to analysis settings, change my number of steps to two, and then I would just go through these displacement constraints and make it so that they're inactive on this first load step. So change that to zero here and 10 here. That way, no load applied in the first load step, load applied in the second load step. And then I could look at the difference between the total volume on load step one and two to calculate my difference. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for tuning in.